the Philippines is not your country. If you don't like it, go out. Um, if you're a foreigner, you may have heard that. Or if you're new to the Philippines, you're going to hear that. And to be honest with you, I think it's completely wrong. And it's a bit of a threat just to stop people um, trying to create things for the better. If you think it's okay um, to keep children in cages, um, go ahead. You'll fit quite well with those that say go home. Um, but uh, even the Pope, I think it's a bit diplomatic this visit to the Philippines because so many things have hit the media, um, including the children, the street kids that have been locked in cages. The only way these things change is international pressure. Inside the country, it ain't going to happen. There's very little support for change. Um, there's people that benefit from bad things going on in the Philippines and everybody knows where the rot is they can see it from the bottom all the way to the top they know where it is and that, that is part and parcel of the problem is it within the Philippines and it's the same wherever you are the UK is the same politics is corrupt it doesn't matter what country you're in they're corrupt but sometimes you can create change by a little bit of pressure. Um, the Pope's visit is probably an ideal time to put pressure on the politics within the Philippines. Um, not for me to do, but for politicians to do from other countries. Um, same as the church being um, getting congregations to put a bit of pressure on change. Uh, locking street kids in cages, I don't think that's right wherever they are. Um, but you will hear, if you're going to the Philippines, you will hear people say that if you're not happy. You know, if so, when they say not happy, I'm about a very specific thing. Um, I remember Sunstar, which is a local Cebu newspaper, reported on, a, I think the guy was an Australian. He was about 70 years old. He'd been in uh, the Kola Market area, and they have these concrete slabs across the sewers. There's open sewer pits, you know, just rectangular sewers uh, with a concrete slab on the top. And basically the slab had collapsed, he fell through, cut his leg and wasn't impressed. And he went to the mayor's office to ask why don't they do something about this. And he, the mayor wasn't there and then later on the mayor jokingly put in the newspaper that if he didn't like it he should just go home. Now, if we all took that view, where would we be in the world today? I mean, not being funny, but the Philippines has about 8 million people abroad. If everybody turned around and said, well, I'm not happy, you just go home. It's a two-way street. But for positive change, you do need to have people that are actually trying to change things. Because I know we talk to people in the Philippines myself, most people... Um, would go for change if they knew how to get it. There is a lack of interest in politics for the majority of people. They can't see how something will positively change. A lot of these people that are in politics are historically from families that have had influence on the country for long periods of time, from Spanish rule. So they're not easy to change, they're not easy to influence. And as such, most Filipinos feel they can do something about the problems in the country. And I would say, financially, the Philippines has got the money. Yeah, it's not a poor country. People assume it's poor. It's full of silver, it's full of oil, it's full of natural gas, there's, there's uh, copper, there's resources all over the islands. Um, but who's benefiting from it? And that's my point. Who is benefiting from it? And only these things can be changed by international pressure. And I'm not trying to turn around and change the Philippines. I'm just saying when people turn around and say, go home, foreigner, you've got no right of an opinion. Everybody's got a right of an opinion. Um, it doesn't matter who they are or where they are. Because they're quick enough giving an opinion when they want to give one. Um, it's a two-way street. 